My time was only the beginning and the trigger for 12 months of deadly conflict. In the coming days, we'll be remembering the events in our special coverage on air and online. Stay with us. With a Friday deadline looming, the clock is ticking for Greece and the EU to agree a bailout extension. The Greek government is now reportedly trying to negotiate a loan extension from lenders. Previous talks failed with what the Greek finance minister described as an ultimatum. And it's all about the conditions on which Athens accepts the money. So, the EU is ready to extend the bailout programme for as much as half a year. But this is something Greece strongly opposes. It hopes to get the money on much different terms that exclude the strict austerity measures attached to previous loans. Earlier, the side seemed to have reached an agreement, but it was pulled at the very last minute by the EU. They now blame each other for the failed negotiations. The fact that this provocative document was up for discussion at the Eurogroup, although the one we had previously agreed upon in principle was withdrawn, proves that specific circles within the Eurozone want to undermine the new Greek government. However, it's not the Greek government or Greece that they are playing with but with Europe and its future. So far, we haven't really understood if Yanis Varoufakis and the government that he represents here as finance minister are taking the best decisions and showing the best behavior for the Greek people. But Kostas Panay Otakis, he's a professor of sociology at the City University of New York, doesn't think Mr. Shubley's observation is correct. I think, um, you know, first of all, the, the German statement that um, is um, clearly sort of, uh, it's sort of a sign of arrogance to say that um, a, a government that was just elected uh, does not have the interests of Greeks in mind. I mean, clearly that's not what uh, Greeks think. And in fact, the popularity of the government, according to recent polls, has increased. Uh, Syriza is faced with a dilemma that on the one hand, its victory is creating, um, you know, certain rifts uh, within Europe, certain hopes. But at the same time, this is also a problem because the political elites are alarmed about that. Coming up, Jordan promises further revenge against Islamic State for the execution of one of its pilots. But despite the outrage at this, uh, his death caused in the country, there are some people who side with the jihadists. Latest hour, Bell True reports on Islamic State supporters in Jordan. Plus, a video game that's used to teach the history of slavery in schools in America sparks a wave of criticism. That story is just coming up. The Pentagon is developing an internet search engine. However, this one is going to shed light on the darkest corners of the deep web. Now, the idea is that the World Wide Web we use is actually just 5% of the true internet. What remains is called the deep web. It's a home for criminals, but also for whistleblowers and political activists who wish to avoid the attention of the security services. And encryption advocate Lada Levinson believes it's not something Washington likes too much. What they're doing to the deep web and the dark web now, they've been doing to the entire internet for the last 10 years. The only difference is they've expanded the repository of information to include data that previously wasn't indexed. What's scary is that tools like this can be very powerful weapons when it comes to de-anonymizing um, individuals who are trying to remain anonymous. It takes these tools and it simplifies them and sort of expands their reach so that any FBI agent or federal prosecutor can now run these searches. It will become harder and harder for the individual activist to know what to do. And what we'll end up with is a world where the criminals are organized into sophisticated organizations that share knowledge. The intelligence agencies are the same. The individuals who need these tools to affect positive change don't know what they should and shouldn't do. Well, privacy issues are also the focus of Going Underground on RT UK. The host of that show, Afshin Matazi, he spoke to one of the founders of an online campaign that wants to discover exactly which citizens British intelligence spied on.
It was only on Monday that the NGO Privacy International launched a website to help people find out whether Britain's security state is illegally spying on them. It follows this month's extraordinary ruling from the regulator of MI5, MI6 and GCHQ that people have indeed been having their phone calls and text messages bugged. So we've got, we've got a real problem in this country um, because still um, whenever anything gets too secret or too sensitive or simply embarrassing for government they ref resort to NCND, neither confirm nor deny. And so our court cases have been run on the basis that the government is neither confirming nor denying the existence of anything it, that we're challenging. Um, you know, th this makes it difficult, as you might imagine, to get to the, the heart of real issues. On the way, how one of the world's most remotest post offices has a job opening.